we want to log our learning rate just to see if our fancy tricks are working and how that's going to look, right? So we're going to make sure it's kind of flat for a while and it's going to look like a cosine function after that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to define this callback, right? So this is a, a learning rate logger that we can pull from bolts, right? So, sorry, from lightning uh, here. So in lightning, we have this module called callback, so you can pull that learning rate logger from there. So we pull this learning rate logger, and then we're just going to create an array to store these callbacks here, right? So let's just say that these are our callbacks. What callbacks do we want to use? And callbacks are arbitrary, um, they're arbitrary programs. So you can do anything you want, right? Uh, so you can insert function anywhere in the code, and then it'll work fine. So in this particular case, we are doing something funky, right? We're not like, just taking a single image and a label. We're like creating two copies. And we have these transforms that we defined up here. So this, this one and this one. So you can just you know, modify the data module to use that transform. So for the train transforms, we're just going to use the one that we created up there, right? So that's a Sinclair um, train data transform. And then um, you know, we need to know the height of the C part 10 in this case. We could crop them to whatever we want. So what we're saying is, I want to crop C part 10 to 32, which is already 32 by 32. But in this case, remember that the transform was defined for, Im for image nets up here. Um, so we set it up for 224, but in, in fact, we want it for 32 because it's C part 10. So I could change it there uh, okay. and here if I wanted to, and then not have to pass anything in here, right? So yeah, and, no, I mean the image height is not just for that; it's also for random uh, crop resize. So it randomly uh, crops an image and resizes it to thirty-two. So it randomly crops an image within a certain. Uh, oh, good catch! Yeah, that's a good catch. Yeah. Okay, so the same thing for the for the validation transforms, right? And if we were to do a test loop as well, I would just pass in the test transforms here as well, or. Um, using the same eval one. Okay, so it's with our data, right? So this is cool because like all of the others have tracked it. You don't need to know the, the what normalization constants to use or anything. It's just all encompassing here. So you can share this now, it's very easy. Um, okay, so now um, normally you do, Lightning will call these for you automatically, these methods. So um, prepared data is how you'll download the data set onto the machine. So if you're doing multiple GPUs, then prepare data is going to make sure that only one GPU downloads the data set because you don't need to download it 50 times, right? So prepare data will do it once. And then setup will be called um, whenever the training starts to make sure that um, you pull things out like the size of the images or whatever information you want. So in this case, because I need to know that up front, I'm just going to call this myself manually, right? So if I didn't need to know that up front, then I would just let Lightning call it automatically. Um, so we'll call this materialized data. Okay, great. And why do I need to know that? Well, that's because I need to know the number of training samples for our algorithm, right? Because that's how we're going to do the learning, the, the annealing over, over time. Yeah. Um, so I need to know that up front. So I'm just going to pull out this data loader here, right? So I'm, I'm looking at how many batches I have, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to multiply by my match size. In this case, this machine is a V100 with 32 gigs of RAM. So we consider batch slice of something large, like 1024. So um, yeah, so this is going to tell me how many training samples I'm using now. You could define this in the data module yourself as a property, and then just pull it out if you wanted to. But in this case, I'm being a little bit lazy. I'm just going to use this. Uh, <laughs> so get number of samples. OK. So now we're going to instantiate the model, right? So this is Sinclair. So what parameters did we not set by default? Um, I believe it was the batch size and then the number of samples. And then everything else is the same. So we're just going to, we're going to fill this in, right? So batch size we have there. And then the other thing was what? Number of samples. So number of samples, that's just going to be these guys here, train samples. OK, so now. We can initialize your model here. So that's the beauty of this. Like now, whenever you want to share your code, you can say here C part 10 data module, here are the transforms for C4 Simclear. You can mix them together if you want. And then here's Simclear. And you know that you have everything to find that you need it on there. So there's no magic parameter, no, no random arc parse thing that you don't know what's going on. Um, it's all there. Um, 
yeah sorry i would just like to say that this has been actually done in a lot of different papers so moco v2 was published using simple transformations or even swab have to find a couple of new transformation and apply those to simplier to see how simplier performs so this step is like really important that you can basically call in any transformation here yeah and and because of the way that the the way that lightning modularizes your code we were able to implement byr in like 3 hours because it was pretty much most of simplier it was using the same exact transforms so all we needed to do was basically modify this um the optimizer stuff and then modify this particular how this this happens in the algorithm right um and largely there's something else that we need to do with the callback but it was mostly the same so in this case now we can just train right so now we're going to init a lightning trainer and we are going to pass in the callback so we defined and so here uh we only have one callback yeah uh so call yeah, so here, and this is just because I want to see the learning rate logger. Now, this is not required. I don't have to do that, but in this case, I will. Um, and then, now, I am on uh, Jupyter Lab, and Jupyter Lab and Colab have notoriously bad refresh rates where the UI might freeze. So I'm going to add this flag. So Lightning has this flag where the, the progress bar won't be updated as frequently. So I'm going to say update every 10 batches, just, just to make sure we don't bring down the UI. Um, although in this case, this is a pretty slow algorithm, so we could probably get away with like, let's just say we two of them, right? And let's see how that goes. Um, we do have a GPU on this machine, so let's use it. And uh, this is, uh, we, are, we are running on uh, PyTorch 1.6 here, uh, which means that we can also train in 16-bit precision. And notice something, I have to change nothing in my code to get this, right? I could do 16-bit and GPU training without doing anything to my code, nothing about devices or whatever. Um, okay. That's awesome. That's like seriously awesome right now. Yeah. Um, um, and and this, the, the Precision 16, because this is a V100, it will actually give me like 3x speed up over a regular GPU because uh, of the architecture we're using under the hood. Yeah. One final thing I would like to mention in the trainer arguments is that since we're using this one GPU, it's fine. But uh, there's something else called as a global batch norm, which simply uses uh, it synchronizes the batch statistics between all GPUs for the batch norm. And we do discuss this uh, slightly later after this tutorial. But the whole point is you can just set a flag for sync bash norm equals to true, and Lightning does that for you, like on its own. Like that, like this now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to deal with this now. So you turn this on, and Lightning will take the batch norm parameters and sync them across all GPUs. If you have a thousand of them, it doesn't matter. We will handle it automatically, um, which is great. Um, okay, so now we're ready to train, and we should be able to just hit this and go, assuming we have no bugs. Okay, great. Oh, <laughs> did not define Simplier. Wow, I forgot to press enter, huh? Oh, it's small. Look at that. Let's just make it big. What's simple, clear, right? So let's do that. <laughs> um, and it's actually lowercase. Great. So prepare data gets called. All the downloads happen, setup gets called, it pulls out all the dimensions, and then we start training, right? So now we see that it's training. And here we are. So pretty fast, where uh, each batch is like 13 seconds, which is great.